After my previous video about the performance of running Abacus and Ansys on an Apple MacBook with M1 Max CPU, many people asked about the possibility of running SOLIDWORKS on it. So in this video, let's find out the performance of Apple Silicon processors in running SOLIDWORKS. Stay tuned. Hello everyone. If you are new here, my name is Hamid. I'm a research engineer based in Montreal, Canada. And in this video, I will show you a benchmark test comparison between a 16-inch MacBook Pro with an M1 Max CPU and a dual Xeon HP workstation with an NVIDIA A6000 Quadro GPU. First, as you probably know, SolidWorks currently doesn't support M1 MacBooks natively. And there are only two ways to use SolidWorks on an Apple computer. Number one, through the 3D Experience online platform, which basically runs the app inside your internet browser. Two, through a virtual Windows machine. Our focus today is on the second method. Keep in mind that there is no longer a bootcamp option for running Windows directly on an Apple computer. Let's not go into the details of the performance when you run Windows on a virtual machine compared to when you run it directly. However, using a virtual machine tends to not be as nice for the end user as a native app in terms of practicality. Okay, without further ado, let's jump to my experience with running SolidWorks on an M1. I installed Windows 10 ARM on a virtual machine in Parallels, and then I followed the standard instructions to install SolidWorks 2022 SP1 on my MacBook 16 with M1 Max CPU and 64 GB of RAM. My first try was not successful and I had some problems with the software license manager. Then after playing with the network settings in parallel, I found that I have to choose my network hardware to work in the bridge mode and I also have to disable the feature for sharing Mac folders. However, luckily for some reason sharing a custom folder was not an issue. Then I was able to run the software as usual. And once again, the magic behind these Apple Silicon CPUs was revealed. The overall performance was quite smooth in opening a model and navigating through it. The software was quite good at handling and even highlighting the edge of an object during some tests. Also, the 3D view, zoom and rotation of the model was kind of a smooth experience, all without showing any sign of stress on the laptop. My quick review showed that everything was working except for SolidWorks Electrical and CAM. At least that was my experience. To be honest, I'm not used to SolidWorks that much and I didn't play with this part. However, I realized that both of these depend on an SQL server that apparently was missing some files or was not able to perform after installation. Finally, for the sake of comparison, I ran the SolidWorks performance benchmark test on both my laptop and my HP Windows workstation. The Windows workstation was equipped with 384 GB of RAM and an NVIDIA A6000 GPU. And here are the results side by side. As you can see from the results, the MacBook performed quite well in the performance benchmark test and the results were quite comparable. That being said, there can be no doubt about the fact that running a CPU intensive piece of software like SolidWorks on an M1 MacBook, especially the first gen laptop, is far from ideal if you consider yourself a heavy user. I mean, you cannot expect to be able to work smoothly with a model like this dinosaur. However, for users who do not normally deal with heavy models and drawings, SolidWorks may run okay on a Mac with an M1 CPU, especially the newer series with M1 Max and M1 Ultra processors. Also, it's important to be aware that you will experience some performance related issues when running SOLIDWORKS on a Mac. For example, occasional graphical glitches in features such as transparency and real. This is because Apple does not build these Macs with a graphical driver similar to the Nvidia Quadro or ATI Fire Pro graphic cards that SOLIDWORKS is optimized for. You may also experience other little glitches such as items temporarily disappearing when you rotate, zoom and pan, especially with dimension text and 3D details. But the point is that it is quite usable depending on the size of the mod. And that was it. I hope you liked this video. Thank you for watching. This is Hamid DLL and I will see you in the next